religion has enjoyed a pretty wide playing field for this role in society for 200 years, in part because the fraction of Americans who don't use religion as an important guide for decision making has never been as large as it is right now. Because it was only in the decades after World War II that a series of Supreme Court decisions began to more sharply define the proper spheres of influence between the civic and the religious. Really, it's, it's kind of tragic and contrary to the Constitution of this country, which says there is no religious test for holding public office in the United States. At a Martin Luther King memorial address, Governor Robert Bentley told his audience in a church, anybody here today who has not accepted Jesus Christ as their savior, I'm telling you, you're not my brother and you're not my sister, and I wanna be your brother. Take away the specifics of the quote, who said it, when and where, and it's an unremarkable statement. In the Gospels, Jesus of Nazareth is quoted as making propositions about the absolute necessity for faith in him and his divinity as necessary for individual salvation. As a man who makes no secret of his religious identity in public, and of course it's an open question if you could even be elected governor of Alabama if you did say your religious beliefs were a private matter, Robert Bentley had every right to say what he said in the legal sense. There is no prohibition against religious statements from elected officials. There's no prior restraint against the state governor speaking in a church. But the real question is, is it a good idea? If you present yourself to the voters of a state and you win and you take the oath, who do you promise to serve? At his inaugural at the beginning of that same year, the governor said he took the example of servant leadership from Jesus and made this declaration. Now it is time that we, the men and women elected by you, remember this. We all work for the citizens of this state and we have 4.5 million bosses. I was definitely much more with him on this last statement than on the first one. Yes, Governor, the Jewish Alabamans are your bosses, the Muslim Alabamans, the atheist ones included. If you're the governor of a state, even a state as proudly religious as Alabama, does it make sense to declare that unless someone shares your religious conviction, they can't be your brother or sister? Leading America and handling American leadership in the world is going to get nothing but more complicated in the years to come when it comes to negotiating the fault lines between cultures, religions, and races. The terrible, tragic death toll in the acrimonious divorce between Sudan and South Sudan is about many things, including oil, race, and a history of bad blood. But religion is right there in the mix, with an almost entirely Muslim Sudan and a heavily Christian South. You can see that same split in Nigeria, Africa's largest country, that same confrontation has been a long-term source of war and suffering in the Philippines, a fatal sideshow to the collapse of the Mubarak regime in Egypt, and as an ugly accelerant to the bloodletting that accompanied the breakup of Yugoslavia. There is no requirement that an American president be religious. In fact, as I mentioned, right there in the Constitution is the admonition that there be no religious test but an American president must be religiously literate. Anyone who wants to sit in the Oval Office has to know what the difference between a Shia and a Sunni is, and these days with the smoldering civil war in Syria, the difference between a Sunni and an Alawite. You should know why, even after partition, India has one of the largest Muslim populations of all the countries in the world. And what's different about a mosque in Indonesia, a mosque in Saudi Arabia, and a mosque in Cedar Rapids, Iowa? You must be religiously literate to be president, but not necessarily religious. But you should know that Americans consistently tell pollsters they want a person of faith as president by a healthy majority 
such a healthy majority that one suspects that even atheists have told, told pollsters they want the president to be religious. The results would indicate that Americans want even someone who does not share their religious convictions over someone with no religious identity at all. But that's right now. Will it remain that way? <laughs>